Hi guys, it has been Saturday and it was truly awful weather last week. So I decided, uh, I spent a lot of time designing a new cap model for a new folding knife. Uh, and today I want to show you how I go from a digital cap model to a real world prototype via 3D printing. So if we take a look here, it's called the Gersica model, the Gersica, or uh, it's an old uh, Germanic name. And as you can see, it's a multi layered horn cliff. I think it's a very cool design. Uh, it folds open very nicely and there's a lot of little details like this top swatch uh, that increases the thickness of the blade at the end. Uh, finger choils, uh, stop pin which you can see right here. It has this typical curve of uh, the lineage line which uh, is something I'm a bit famous for I guess. Uh, and it's, it's, it's multi-layered so the outer layers are carbon fiber or G10 and then you have liners of 2mm thick of titanium uh, and you have all these open pockets so you get uh, space throughout and you can see stuff throughout the design uh, something that's also very cool is the jimping uh, and the floating uh, and appearing backspacer there is even a lanyard hole right here uh, a bit of a tail pocket clip so it's a very complete design uh, it's working, it's running on ball bearings, uh, got the lockup system all uh, designed in. But now it's time uh, how it feels in hand, how does it work, can you operate it, uh, is it comfortable, does it need to be more radius. Uh, and for that I want to make 3D prototypes and this is very cool because I have uh, 3D prototypes all the, of all the knives I made before. Uh, only this time I'm going to show you how I'm uh, making and learning from it. To make the model more practical for 3D printing, I'm going to remove some stuff. Uh, for instance, the cat design runs on ball bearings. Uh, the 3D model I'm going to run it on washers because it's easier. Because the plastic is too soft to uh, have run ball bearings run in it. Okay, so this is actually quite cool. What I'm going to use for 3D printing is the new MakerBot tough grey filament. So it's more like... Uh, it's a new kind of PLA filament, it's stiffer and it's better machinable but should make it easier for me to finish. So I'm going to use my Leatherman mud, first knife I've ever, ever, ever bought. Uh, and we're going to play a bit with uh, the new filament. So the settings I'm going to print these in, always high of course. Um, so this menu is good, extrusion speed, the only thing I adjusted was my outline print speed, if you do it slower it will be more accurate. As for infill, I bumped it up to 60%, I want uh, things to be really stiff. Uh, infill layer height, uh, that's still normal. I changed my infill pattern to linear. Okay, so here it is, the new Smart Extruder Plus. I'm gonna take out the old one, put in the new one, uh, and then I'm gonna load filament. Ta -da. Well, hello. As you may see, I've dec redecorated my room a bit. Well, no, I haven't. I've bought a new house together with my girlfriend. We're living together now. The last segment of film you saw, that was uh, from February. It's now almost July. Uh, so a lot of time has passed. But that does mean that I got a bit of time to play with uh, this little thing right here. So this is uh, the 3D print and PLA tough material uh, and I have to say it's uh, rather nice and compact especially when you compare it to the skin lock and it's a whole lot smaller which is good because people in the Netherlands tend to be very scary of this one um, but yeah, if you take a look at it like this, it's quite good. There are, of course, errors in the design. This this fillet here, one of the inside tips, it's too sharp, so it needs to be bigger. Other nice detail. The detail. This is the uh, lock bar part. 
and as you can see I'm trying to uh, screw it up of uh, screw it down so it won't lock up so yeah that hole needs to be removed pocket clip was utterly terrible uh, not by function but mostly by the way it looked and the lockup is not as stable as I hoped it would so I need to uh, get that surface closer to the pivot but otherwise it's um, yeah a, a really nice design and it's, uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna make it yet, CNC, OEM or uh, water jet and the rest by hand, but yeah, really happy of it. So I'm now at version 3 and I'm still not happy with uh, how the knife is locking up both the form and I'll show you what's the problem. Uh, so this is the knife and if I hide this part you can here see the lock bar <coughs> uh, compared to the pivot uh, and this distance it's quite far uh, and this may cause lock rock so let me explain what that is okay so this is a 3d print of one of the earlier versions and let me sketch it out real quick okay here I have the pivot, uh, and the knife blade goes like well, something like this. Okay, so if I place my lock bar here, which is easy because it's more space, uh, then my knife blade will lock up here. Uh, and the thing is, the farther you go this distance, the stronger this lever will be. So, uh, when you take a close-up look, this is your lock geometry and here is your lock bar. This distance and this angle uh, will determine the strength of your lock. So if I push here on the blade, the force will be... Uh, uh, execute it around the pivot because it will spin and the farther it is away from the pivot uh, the more rotation that surface will be have uh, will be having uh, and that's what happens the force will go like this direction and instead of pushing straight against your lock bar uh, it will cause rotation and what will happen is your lock bar will go up and down instead of collecting all the force and forcing it in that way the way the lock bar system works okay so when I have this knife design here and yes video is coming up uh, you can see that the lock bar is quite far away from the pivot and if I zoom in and I'll give you a close-up look of what happens if you now tilt the blade, the lock bar will go up and down instead of uh, rotating. So what I need to do to fix this problem is get my lock bar cut out as close to the pivot as possible. Best would be around here, but then you run into another problem and that is your detent ball track uh, and your stop pin location. Uh, and that's the problem with my knives always, because I make such slim profiled knives, uh, there isn't that much space left. So it has to be a compromise. Let me show you what I've done in CAD. This is the first model, uh, and here you can see this sketch line, which pictures the detent ball. And here you see the detent uh, track, uh, no, the stop in track, and the stop in, uh, which is symbolized by this hole here. Okay. So it runs like this, very smooth, blah blah. Uh, but you can see the distance is quite far away from the pivot. So normally you would like um, bring this line over to here, bring it closer, uh, which is what I did in this model. Uh, so once again, detent ball, detent track, uh, and I brought it closer to the pivot. But you can see that on a detent track. Uh, the ball releases quite early, so I already fattened this handle part here. 
uh, but it's a compromise. It's you're 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 not having a smooth because like here it does click and then it scratches, which is uh, not good for the, the opening for the smoothness of the flipper. So it's it's uh, a compromise. Uh, and then I went one step further, and this is a 4.2 version, um, and it has two D10 balls, two D10 tracks, uh, and what it works like this. So this is clo closed. You're flipping it. Uh, you can see that this D10 ball is inside uh, the stop pin track, so it has no contact. It's a bit lower than that one, uh, which is on the full surface. Now here's what now things are starting to happen. So this D10 ball is now hovering above uh, this plane of the knife uh, blade and it's like um, a few millimeter, uh, a few tenths of a millimeter deeper inside uh, and this ball is the one who is still making all the contact. So once this ball leaves the blade and the lock bar will snap down just a tiny little bit and then it will start uh, making contact with this detent ball instead of this surface uh, and what, uh, what it does is now this detent ball will skate through until it says like click this is a very small distance and this distance is also very small uh, so now you have like the perfect lock, lock up uh, full contact with detent ball, detent tracks that uh, have no problems. Uh, this is what I'm going to try making, and not just only on 3D printer but also by hand. Uh, so this is the solution. Uh, solution I chose. It's difficult. There is one downside. The surface for the lock bar is smaller, but it's 3.37 millimeters. It should be enough. So uh, I'm going to try that, I'll put on uh, a side component and there it is, vertical model. I hope you liked the video, I hope you learned something about how I would go from first CAD model to final CAD model, how I work out all the details and uh, I hope you learned something. So see you again next time, then I'll be making this model out of steel and titanium. So I made it in...